in today's show. It's an early look at the fantasy basketball waiver wire. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every morning as well. We are free, available on all platforms, and make sure you're checking out your favorite team's Locked On podcast. All right. Normally, this show is going to come on a Monday. So before the Monday games, probably during the Sunday games, um, and it's a waiver wire show. So we're going to touch on guys who to add, maybe who you can look to drop. This will get fleshed out in different ways throughout the season. But I thought with two days and nearly every team played, not every team, I think we've got who hasn't played yet. Miami hasn't played, Dallas, uh, Atlanta, and the Clippers. So we've got 26 of the 30 teams have played. We've had one game from everyone else. There's going to be overreactions, but there are things that we need to pay attention to in this point in the season. So let's pay attention to them and let's talk some waiver wire uh, action at this stage. All right, so um, these are the most added players over the last 24 hours. Number one by a significant margin is Chris Duarte. He was excellent yesterday. There is absolutely no denying that. And should he be added? Probably. Look, he's available in, even though he's been added a lot, he's available in a lot of leagues. There's uh, there's no question that he was awesome. He's still around in, I'm just going to bring up the Yahoo number. Uh, in our advanced metric, he's only 66% uh, rostered. So there is obviously room for him to be uh, to be added there too. I'm just bringing that up. I should have had that prepared. I don't know why I didn't have it. He's 37% rostered in Yahoo. So he's available, right? But he shot 60%. That's not going to continue. Played 33 minutes and scored 27 points. I think that when Levert and Warren are back, Warren might not be back till Christmas. Like Who knows when TJ's back? Levert might be back next week. And I think that Duarte could still start next to Levert, but they could also just go with Justin Holiday there. So there is going to be a drop-off, right? But for now, we add him. We see what happens. We see how they use him. But uh, yeah, be careful who you're dropping. If you've got a Thad Young which we'll talk about soon, you drop Thad Young and you add Chris Duarte and we'll see how it works for him. But just be aware that this is, it's not quite peak because he can have have a two steal game or a two block game or a four assist game. In this game, he just did 27 points with threes and nothing else. You add him, but there is, um, when we're looking, yeah, pro- trying to project it out in the future, there are some downside situations that, um, that can come into it just because of those potential returning players. And if Levert and Warren play 32 minutes each, eventually, yeah, that's 64 minutes are going to come out of the rotation. And Duarte is probably still not going to get 33 minutes in that scenario. The second most highly added player is Nemanja Bielica, who is, again, after one game, the 28th ranked player. That's probably not going to stick. He's available in a lot of leagues too. Um, I loved what he did in that first game. The Warriors used him as a center a lot. He shot... 86% from the field. Like he's a career sub 50% shooter. So we would expect that to come down and we can talk about, yeah, the Warriors system was great for him. That's fine. Nobody shoots that. So it is going to come down your minimum 20 percentage points, maybe 30, maybe 40 percentage points. He is, at this point, he is clearly a better option than James Wiseman when he comes back, but that will still give Wiseman opportunities. So for the short term, especially if you're watching this before Thursday's games, yeah, Bielitz is a solid ad, but, yeah, long term, yeah, I'm prioritizing Duarte ahead of him pretty clearly. These guys are, are being added a lot as well. Pat Connaughton and Patty Mills. I guess the Connaughton one is because Drew Holiday's out. Brooke Lopez is out for Milwaukee today. Connaughton played well in that first game. Long term, he is not someone I'm interested in. I would much prefer the bloke at the bottom of this list, uh, if you're talking bucks, in Grayson Allen. He is much, uh, much preferable to me as an ad. But can, Connaughton can be a short term one. And then, yeah, much like Duarte and Bielitsa, Patty Mills, he was 100% from three. That will not continue. Will he play 27 minutes or not? He could. I'm not 100% certain on that. 
Um, I think Paddy is more of a stream for 12-team leagues rather than a must-roster player. The Ben Simmons situation, literally it's all over the place. I woke up this morning and Simmons is going to be out because he's mental readiness and he's going to be out an indeterminate amount of time. All right. And just as I hit record on this, Woj you know, tweets, oh, actually, Simo is going to be back at shoot around. They're going to work out what's happening. So by the time you listen to this, I've got no idea what's happening with Simmons. Regardless, Tyrese Maxey needs to be on a roster. You need to make sure he is rostered because I thought he looked pretty good. in that. I thought he looked really good in that role. Um, he was 42nd so far this season. He would he score 20 points with five assists. Simmons returns and it does cut his role, but Max is going to be a really solid option. And then, of course, I'm not going to do it because yesterday when I did it, it screwed the microphone up. But Desmond Bain, he's going to continue to start even when Dylan Brooks comes back. It will reduce his usage because Brooks takes every shot in the world. But Bain is a must-roster player, as is his uh, teammate, D'Anthony Melton, who I, um, who I don't have on that list at this point. But, yeah. He, because he's not one of the most added players, weirdly enough, but he should, we'll talk about him actually uh, in a second. We'll get back to, uh, we'll get back to old Melton in just a second. But guys, it is great to have McDonald's sponsoring this podcast. They've proudly been serving communities since 1965. And it's always been a place, more than a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's a place where you go and you hang out. As a kid, everyone's got those fond memories, going to McDonald's birthday parties, um, coming back from their Saturday morning sport where you're playing tennis, you're playing basketball, you're playing soccer, you're playing cricket. I used to go there after cricket all the time, grab myself a cheeseburger, get a bit older, grab a quarter pounder, grab a six pack of nuggets, a 20 pack of nuggets, a 50 pack of nuggets. I remember going to America and getting a 50 pack of nuggets once and it was great, crazy. Couldn't get through them all, but it was great. Anyway, McDonald's, it is that great, it's like a community center type thing. You see people you know, you see friends there. It's just a welcoming feeling and it's always been in our lives. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect. Guys, ba-da-ba-ba-ba, I'm loving it. All right, you should be loving uh, the waiver wire in fantasy basketball because that is where a lot of value comes. So let's look at some guys who I think are droppable players. Now, you don't have to drop these guys. And when I say this, I'm going to reiterate this continually. This does not mean just go out and drop them, right? But if there's someone on the wave wire that you want to add, Desmond Bain, Chris Duarte, Tyrese Maxey. If you've got Thad Young, the, the Spurs, that whole situation with Young is so weird. Yeah, I talked about it ad nauseum in the offseason. Hey, they haven't even announced him arriving as part of the Bulls. They need to cut players. Is he going to get traded? He didn't play the first preseason game. No, okay. And then he started playing. He's going to have a bench role. And then, which rightfully so, they didn't play him. They are looking to develop their young guys. More minutes for Vassell. Yeah, they limited McDermott's playing time, which was great. I think that if Young does get traded or released, he's going to move into a backup role that's 20 minutes a night somewhere, and he's not going to be worth holding in 12-team leagues. So I've got no problem moving on from Thad Young. Yeah, as soon as I started to see this uncertainty about, hey, is he actually going to be on San Antonio? He was someone that I avoided in all drafts anyway. But if you did happen to draft him, I think he's a pretty safe drop. This one's more for category leagues versus points leagues. But Gary Trent, there's no reason to have him in a category league. He offers nothing. Last year, he played 31 minutes a night and wasn't a top 180 player. This year, now he's coming off the bench behind Goran Dragic. I don't know whether that will remain, but Siakam's still got to fit into that lineup somewhere. So, yeah, that's another player to push back in the rotation. Trent can be a points league guy to hold for sure, and he was he was bad, but honestly, he's bad often. He did get three steals against Washington, but the shot is never there. He never gets assists. He never gets rebounds. He shoots a poor percentage. He never gets to the line. He is not a good fantasy player. There are so many better options to have. Look, Grayson Allen, Jordan Wara, Pat Connaughton, stream them in for today. Add Duarte, Bain, Melton. All of these guys are priorities over Gary Trent. Do not have... I would not bother with Gary Trent on your 12-team roster. I probably... I probably wouldn't bother with him on a 14-team league roster. I think Patrick Williams is a guy... And he's dealing with a shoulder issue now as well. But I don't think they're going to close games with him. They did it yesterday with Alex Caruso in his place. He had like a 7% usage. His value is going to be as a steals specialist. He's not going to score. He's not going to get assists. He's not going to take shots. He's not going to be a great rebounder. He might get some steals. But if he's going to play 27 minutes a night instead of 32 minutes a night as they bump minutes in for Caruso or give you Alizé Johnson some playing time there as well, there's no point in holding Williams. He might have this long-term potential. He's going to have no shot of realizing that this season while the Bulls are constructed as they are and while they are fully healthy. So if you do have Pat Williams, he was likely a last pick and you can move on. 
Um, and then Larry Nance Jr. Now, this one I'm a little bit more cautious with, but I was very worried about how the Blazers used him in the preseason. I was like, oh, they're not playing him very much. Let's see how this pans out. And then somehow they played him less in the regular season. He needs like a 27-minute-a-night role to be useful. He gets usefulness by being a high field goal and steals sort of player. But in 18 minutes a night, it's not worth it. I'm not saying that he's an automatic drop, but again, if there are hot players out there, Bain, Melton, um, Duarte, I have no problem dropping Nance, who's not going to get that 31 minutes a night that he got for Cleveland last year. It's just not going to happen in Portland. If you, This is, again, I would happily drop those other three very easily before Nance, but Nance is someone I'd consider. Other guys to consider dropping that you might have grabbed with that last pick, Isaiah Roby. I thought if they start him and play 28 minutes a night, that's great. He came off the bench. He played like 15 minutes. They ran a three-center rotation. Maybe we grab him later on. You can move on. If you want to drop Pokashevsky, drop him. No problem. If you added Lou Dort, drop him. I, I got, he's not a category league guy. He's a, he's a fine points league guy, but he's not a category league guy. Um, so there's some guys who you might have in that uh, in that bench, that bench spot or you took in that last round that, that haven't panned out. And that's fine. They don't pan out, you move on. That's as simple as... Uh, that's as simple as it goes. Now, let's have a look at players who I'm labeling as must-roster players. Now, this is across ESPN and Yahoo. These are guys who are rostered in 50% of few or fewer of leagues, either on Yahoo and ESPN. And ESPN users, I don't know if their roster percentage metric is all over the place, but some of the numbers I'm seeing are insane. So you'll look at these, this list. And you'll go, why are you mentioning these guys are must roster? Because just in case, Evan Mobley is rostered in under 30% of leagues on ESPN. Please, please. Every name on this list has to be on a roster in every single league. These are all top 100 players, I think, for the rest of the season. Evan Mobley is a must roster player. Daniel Gafford is a must roster player. I don't know why he's available in 80 plus percent of ESPN leagues. Mo Bumba. What are we doing, guys? One, two, three, four, five. Every single league. And he was a guy, again, that I told you, like, if you want to pick him in the last round, fine. I was picking him around the hundreds as we came in, like, the last two weeks of the season because I said, the upside there is so high. I'm not waiting to see if someone else gets him at 130. Get him at 100. Like, must roster. Josh Giddy. It wasn't the best performance from Josh Giddy opening night. It's tough against the Jazz. He is still, to me, a clear must roster player and top 100 guy. Jordan Poole is available in ESPN leagues. Jordan Poole, what are we doing? How? How is this possible? How is Jordan Poole available? I'm going to bring up the numbers on Jordan Poole. He's rostered in 33% of ESPN leagues. 33. He's only at 85% on Yahoo as well. He's a clear must-roster player right across the board. Um, And DeAnthony Melton, who is, if I can bring that up, I think he's like at a comically low number as well. On ESPN. Hold on to your dicks. Or if you don't have a dick, hold on to a phallic-shaped symbol somewhere near you. He's rostered in 3% of leagues on ESPN. 3! 48% on Yahoo. He is a must-roster player as well. The wave pool, D'Anthony Melton. Get these guys, those seven names, six names, Mobley, Gafford, Bumba, Giddy, Pool, Melton. Have a look at your wire. You may see that your league has no idea what they're doing and these guys are available. This mainly goes out to ESPN users, but again, Melton's under 50 on, on Yahoo. Please make sure he is rostered, along with those other guys that I talked about as you know, uh, options earlier on. Guys, Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Do you know what your favorite flavor is? Well, if you don't, you need to figure it out. And you can do that by getting yourself a mixed box where they have all their great fl- flavors all in together. But it's raspberry, strawberry, orange, salted caramel, cookies and cream, coconut. Plus, they're bringing out new ones. I got an email about blueberry muffin flavor they're bringing out, which sounds absolutely delicious. But they're not just uh, delicious. They're healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and just 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. And you can get them for 15% off at built.com by using the promo code LOCKED15. So use that code LOCKED15 to get 15% off Built Bar, which is, of course, the best tasting protein bar ever. All right, let's look at some um, upside grab players. And by that, I mean, I don't know that they're going to be 12-team league players, but I was suitably impressed enough with their early season form that they're worth taking a look at. Devin Vassell, I've spoken about him a lot. 
saying, well, if he can find a right way to get 26, 27 minutes, I really like what he can do. I believe he's better than um, uh, Lonnie Walker, but I wasn't sure what they were going to do with him and McDermott, but they played him 26, 20, yeah, 26 minutes in that opening game. And I thought he looked really good out there. He's ranked 35th on the season, 19 points. It's on 67% shooting, which includes three or four from three. That's not going to continue, obviously. But the two steals, five assists is definitely eye-opening for Vassell. And it's the 25 minutes that he played that's that's probably the most eye-opening. If you want to take a flyer on Vassell in a 12-team league, there's no problem with that whatsoever, I don't think. I think if we look at Orlando. Franz Wagner, 75th on the season so far. He played 32 minutes. He had 12, 4, and 2 with a steal and two blocks. These are the numbers that intrigued me from him, for him coming out of college. An ability to get steals, get blocks, yeah, get some assists, do a little bit of scoring. Yeah, The shooting was much better than anticipated. Didn't hit a three, though. Um, so that was really interesting to me. Yes, the minutes are up because there's no Akiki, Isaac, Fultz. Gary Harris was out. But Fultz and Isaac, they might be a couple of months away. Who knows when Harris is going to return? I think Wagner, especially in a 14-team league, I've got to add him for sure. And I'd consider it. Like, he's available. He's 4% rostered on uh, on Yahoo. Four. I, I would consider it. Even if you wanted to take a flyer on a, in a 12-team league or your league's super competitive, there's enough there in the short term to have a look at him. Like, I would, outside of the streaming ability of Pat Connaughton today, I would consider Wagner probably a little bit of a better option as a longer term or at least a longer short term option to add in a 12 team league. And then there's Jordan Wara, who again, no Drew, no Brook, no Hood, no Portis. He's going to get a lot of minutes and a lot of shots. He's an excellent Thursday streamer and he's going to be a pretty interesting points league guy and just a points category streamer while the Bucks are banged up. I, I like him. I think he's maintaining a rotation spot. Any team, any league that's 16 or deeper, I think you have to. Um, you have to grab Noir. He's 77th after his first game as well. And he didn't do that on crazy shooting. 46% from the field. He had 15 points. He had a steal in a block. He had six boards. It's just a well-rounded line in those 26 minutes. And he probably does it again, if not better, against Miami. I think more minutes will come his way. So he's a really interesting add as well. Um, yeah, he's an interesting add also. And then lastly, some other names that I think worth mentioning. I think I did mention Tyrese Maxey already, but Farton Will Barton is available. Um, it looked great in that first game. I thought he looked really good. He had 15 points. Uh, sorry, no, he didn't. Um, that's the wrong numbers. He had 20 points. He had four threes. He had five assists. He's a 31st ranked player. He's available in 55% of Yahoo leagues. That's obviously a number which needs to be corrected. He is um, a guy, again, that was available in the last round of drafts and was someone that I say, hey, with no Jamal Murray, let's take, uh, let's take him. Uh, let's see where, where it goes. It went well. He's absolutely a must-roster player. I hate to think what he's... Um, I don't think he, he wasn't even ranked on ESPN, I believe, at the start of the year. Yeah, 3% rostered on ESPN. So he is a, a guy... Abs- I should have had him on the on the must-roster section as well. I'm not convinced he's going to be a, a, a total top 100 guy the rest of the year. He's pretty bloody close, and he should not be sitting um, on your waiver wire. Guys, that'll do it for my little mini waiver wire show down on YouTube, drop comments below. Tell me what you think. Is this someone that you want me to talk about next time? Is it something you disagree with? Drop it in the comments down below. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.